this video, I'm going to solve a subnetting problem. What is the broadcast address of the network 172.23.131.144? And that is on the subnet mask 255.255.255.240. First thing I want to do here is I want to convert that subnet mask to binary. This is the subnet mask, and that's my IP address. That also happens to represent the network in this particular problem. So converting 255.255.255.240 to binary looks like this. Should be pretty straightforward. That last octet can be a little bit tricky. 240 is 128 and 64 and 32 and 16. So now that I've got that laid out, I can start to convert my IP address to binary as well. But one thing I can look at here and notice really quickly is that three of my four octets are all ones, which means that these octets are not going to change. 172.23.131 is going to stay the same from the first host to the last host. So 172.23.131 131 something is my answer. I just need to figure out what that is. And so the only part that I really need to worry about is this last octet. So I'm going to need to convert this 144 into binary. I'm going to draw a line here between my ones and my zeros because this part represents the network and this part represents the host. That's how subnet masks work. Uh, all the ones are always part of the network and all of the zeros are always part of the host and they're treated differently. The network never changes. Those first three octets, all part of the network, they never change. But because this last octet is split between network and host, this one can get a little strange sometimes. So that's why we need to work through this octet of the problem. So I want to take 144 and I want to convert it to binary. Now I know that 128 fits in 144. And it's going to leave me with 16. So I know that there's a 128 and a no 64, no 32, and a 16. 1001 happens to be the network in binary. And then all zeros, of course. Since I know this is a network ID, I can actually build it right into my N1LB chart, where I define my network, my first usable host, my last usable host, and my broadcast address. The network side never changes for an IP address, so I can carry down my 1001. The broadcast and the network ID and everything in between will always use that 1001 because that is part of the definition of the network in this case. It's my host side that's going to change a little bit. Now, a broadcast address is always the very largest number you can make in the host portion. The network ID is always the smallest number you can make in the host portion. These are always opposites in the host portion. No matter how far that host portion goes, even if it's another octet, those will always be all zeros for the network ID and all ones for the broadcast. Just to be complete, I can fill out the first and last usable host in case I need those numbers as well. The smallest number I can make that isn't already used by the network ID, 0001 in my case. That first usable host. My last usable host will be 1110, the biggest number I can make that isn't the broadcast. These will also be opposites. 0001, 1110. Now if I want any of my numbers that relate to this subnet, I can look here and convert any of these back to decimal and I can know what their value is. 
but in my case I'm looking just for the broadcast address. I just want to convert that number back to decimal. So I've got a 128, no 64, no 32, and I have a 16, an 8, a 4, a 2, and a 1. And I need to add all of these up. So let's find my 10s. There's a 10, there's 10 there, so I can carry 2, and I've got 9 left over. 2, 2, and 1 is 5, and 1 there. So the broadcast address of the network 172.23.131.144 is 159.